Welcome to this week's digital news. Google has updated its financial service policy. We have some great new updates from LinkedIn and Facebook has changed its algorithm and much, much more. Google adds update to financial services policy. Well, it's arrived and from July 2020, Google will require advertisers who are engaged in the promotion of financial services in the UK to complete the business operation verification program when they're requested. We've put a link to the program on our website, but if you're in this sector, it is really worth getting ready sooner rather than later, because when Google does come emailing you, you will only be given 21 days to submit the verification form and failure to comply will result in account suspension. When you get the link, the form will ask you to provide information about your business operation, such as business models, services offered, and the relationships with brands or third parties. Make sure you do have the admin email address for your AdWords account forwarding to your main email account so you don't miss this one. LinkedIn cracking down on page like invites and support function. It's one of those annoying things when someone that you've not seen or heard from in years suddenly pops up a notification asking you to like their new business page. Well, it was disabled by LinkedIn for a while, but now it's back in a slightly less spammy way. Also, in the scary world we live in at the moment with mass redundancies, LinkedIn has added some new tools to the platform to help. So, admins inviting their connections on LinkedIn, in my opinion, has always been a really spammy way of getting page followers. Generating page followers is actually quite a bit harder than getting personal connections, so I can see why some LinkedIn users would revert to this sort of thing. The feature was removed for a while, but now it's back as a credit system. So it seems most people get 100 credits to invite first connections to their page. So if someone accepts, you get that credit back each month and each month it then refreshes. Sounds a good way to keep these sorts of invites kind of on the low down. And we'll put a link to the LinkedIn press release on our page. LinkedIn has also launched the new open to work feature. This allows you to show on LinkedIn that you are looking for new opportunities and then will allow you to use the open to work photo frame in your profile. It's a really thing, simple thing to set up. If you head over to your profile on LinkedIn and beneath your picture, click the show recruiter your open to work link. There's a really simple form to fill in and then you get to choose um, if you want to be shown this information to just recruiters or to everyone. There's also an opportunity to lend a hand. If you create a post as normal, there's an option for offer help and then you can write your message and share as a normal message on LinkedIn. We've put links to both these articles on our website. Facebook Newsfeed Algorithm Update. Facebook announced in their newsroom on the 30th of June an update to Facebook Organic News Algorithm. They announced that when they've surveyed their users, the type of news stories they want to see on the platform was news that was original and transparent. So, as of the end of the month, the news feed will prioritise original stories with transparent authorship. The signals are based on feedback from news publishers, academic experts, but will only apply to the news results. So, news originality. Facebook announced that it understands that journalism takes time and experience, and they're trying to prioritise this in their feeds. So, breaking news stories with in-depth investigation and new tactic, new facts and data, sharing critical updates or broadcasting eyewitness reports will be markers of originality. The platform will also group articles around a particular story or topic and the article that is the most cited will, and as the original source will be prioritised. This won't really affect articles that are shared, but if there are similar stories around a similar article, the goal is to prioritise the most original and cited one. Authorship. Sources that are not transparent about the publisher's editorial staff are going to start seeing their content demoted. Facebook has said there is a strong correlation on articles that don't include author information and poor quality content. Editorial transparency is a professional standard, but it is understood that sometimes this can put journalists in risk, so the rollout is going to be in limited markets to start with. We've put a link to the press release on our website. LinkedIn's new page analytics tools. LinkedIn has released some new company page stats. A little bit embarrassing, I can't remember what was there before, but there's now some interesting information that may or may have not been there before. The follower highlight graph, which I think always was there, is still there and shows growth in page followers over time. But in addition to this is a follower list, along with the month that they started to follow you, which is quite interesting. 
a geographical breakdown, which is a good breakdown of the geographical allocation of where your followers are. And then the most useful competing pages. So I'm always up for a bit of comparison. And here you can see similar pages to your own and compare total followers with new followers, total number of updates and what sort of engagement rate each page is getting. We've put a link to the original post on our website. Did social media have an effect on the first GPF1 race of the season? Okay, it's a little bit of a quiet news week, which gives me the opportunity to talk about one of my other passions, Formula One. And it was the first race of the year this month in Austria. And did social media have an effect on Lewis Hamilton's qualifying results? So I've not really heard like something I've not really heard of something like this happening before. So I wanted to talk about it today. On Saturday the 4th, it was the first qualifying session of the 2020 season, with Mercedes looking like a sure thing for a front row grid lockout, but that's not quite what actually happened. On the final lap of Q3, and each driver was getting their last chance to hit that top time that would result in their grid positions for Sunday's race, Valtteri Bottas, leading the procession of drivers on their flying lap, pushed a bit too hard and ended up in the gravel pit. Yellow flags were shown and the season and the session was finished. Lewis was called to the scrutineer's office and was assessed for not showing slowing for the yellow flag, but there was no penalty applied. The next day, however, the teams uploaded their 360 degree video from the cars and social media users noticed that Lewis had actually passed two yellow flags without slowing. Then about an hour and a half before the race, Red Bull protested again and the new evidence and Mercedes and the Mercedes driver was handed a three place starting penalty. I've never known social media to have influenced a sport like that before. We've put a link to the press release on our website. Update straight to your inbox, subscribe using the link in the description.